Hey guys, it is nine o'clock on a Thursday night, which means it is time for a magic stuff. First of all, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we put videos up like literally every single day. Now today, I'm going to be doing something that you guys requested. A lot of people have been saying they really like my uh, my series of like the three best packet tricks, three best tricks with double backers. So these this this uh, video is going to be the three best sandwich tricks that you've probably never heard of. So uh, everybody knows what a sandwich trick is. Uh, if if you haven't what rock have you been living under but the whole idea is that you have someone picks a card uh, and then you take two other cards normally two kings or two court cards and uh, their card appears in between them it's a really commercial plot laymen really get into it and there's been thousands of variations now i'm going to be showing to you three versions that you probably haven't seen and they're not traditional sandwich routine so it's not traditional as in you pick a card and I find it there's there's something else that happens with all three of them and a lot of these routines are really really old they've been buried in books for a long time and I, there's a very good chance you've never seen them so without further ado let's have a look at the first routine right so we're going to try and do something with a pack of playing cards Sarah you're going to help me uh Sarah behind the camera my wonderful wife you're going to be my glamorous assistant uh, you're going to pick a card now before you do I'm going to take the two black kings out of the deck put them over there okay so Sarah do me a favor as I go down through the cards just say stop anytime you want stop perfect now do you want the top card of this package or the bottom card of this package top one of that one please this one here yeah cool great stuff so the important thing is that you look at your card. Can you remember it for me? I can. Great stuff. And I'm going to put your card here, sandwiched in between uh, the two kings. Can you see that? I can. So in other words, we've kind of got your card sandwiched face down in between the two face-up kings. So the idea is really simple. I want you to watch really carefully. I'm going to put the deck over there for a second. And that obviously leaves us with these three cards. So we've got uh, your face down card in between the two kings. Now watch, I'm going to take your card out for a minute. I'm going to leave the two kings here. And all I have to do is take uh, the, the face down card, your selection away, wave the two kings over. And when I do, that card disappears, just leaving the two kings, which is kind of weird. But check this out, because now down in the middle of the deck right there, we actually have your ace, this is why I need a close-up, Matt, your ace right there. But check this out, because not only have I got your ace there, yeah. in between the ace, on either side of that ace, yeah. there's two other cards. And not only has your card disappeared from in between the two black kings, but it's actually jumped into the deck right in between the two red oh, kings. Oh, cool. I know, awesome, right? So that is an amazing sandwich routine by J.C. Wagner. Let me explain why I really love this. Um, first of all, it's a great opener. If you're going to do a series of sandwich routines, and I really do think you should. For me, uh, the sandwich plot is a little bit like Ambitious Card. Because with Ambitious Card, the card comes to the top and people are like, what? Do it again. It's one of those tricks that builds by seeing it over and over again. Well, it's the same with the sandwich plot. I see a lot of people just doing one phase. They just do the sandwich routine and then that's it. But the thing is, I think with the sandwich plot, it builds the more you do it. Uh, so, you know, I, I like when I perform a sandwich routine, I like to combine two or three different routines together into one set. For me, this makes a great opener. Uh, because you, you go through and you take out the Black Kings, and at the end, you've got the Black Kings and the Red Kings on the table, um, and you've got the selected card as well. It's nice as well because you've got that kicker ending. You know, you've got the... Um, you've got, you've, it, it's different because you're not finding the selected card. If anything, it's working in reverse because you take a card, you sandwich it in between the Black Kings, and then it disappears, and it's in between the Red Kings. So it kind of turns the whole sandwich plot on its head. It's also really visual. It's really quick, so the whole routine is only two minutes long, which is perfect for sort of a uh, an opening routine. Um, you don't require a table. You can actually do this in the spectator's hand. It uses a regular deck. Uh, you can go from this routine into another sandwich routine, or you're left with a regular deck that you can go into anything else, and there's no gimmicks. Now, there's one thing that I've added on this, and if you do this routine... Um, I'll tell you the, the I'm not going to say an improvement because JC Wagner is amazing, um, but something that I've added. So there's one moment in the routine where they think you've got two black kings with a face down card in between. And in reality, you've got uh, the two kings face down. 
it hiked it like this, and you can do an Edward Victor eye count. Can everyone see that, Sarah? Can you see that on the camera? Uh, you're doing an Edward Victor eye count yeah. to be able to show three cards, okay? So that's what's happening there. Now, when uh, J.C. Wagner originally did this, uh, when he wrote it up in his book, he comes over with his palm, and he palms the two cards, and he comes over from underneath and palms, splits those two cards apart, crosses his hands and drops, and it looks like the card disappeared. So it's... Uh, in full speed, it's kind of a thing of, look, I've got your card in between the kings. All I have to do is this, and the card disappears, which is a nice way of doing it. Um, I prefer to use a Jay, uh, Jay Sankey thing, which he put in one of his books. It was also in his L&L DVD set, which is where you do the same thing. So you do the eye count, but then you do a fake Chris alignment move. So you're pretending it's a fake one because there's only two cards there, but it accomplishes the same thing. So they think this is their selection, it's really the king. You put that into a Finley tent vanish position. And then what you do is, rather than doing the normal Finley, which wouldn't work because that would just drop there like that, what they do is you use this forefinger to flip this king over. And you, it looks like you take the king and then you, wave, you take the selection and wave these two kings over. And it delays the vanish a little bit. Because they see the two kings and then they see the card vanish. So I think that's a better vanish to use. Um, so if you do this, feel free you know, to, to, to try that. But ultimately, this is a great sandwich routine. And I regularly, when I'm doing commercial close-up magic, I will regularly do this. And I'll always, if I do that routine, I'll also always follow it up with the second routine I'm going to be talking about on this, on this video, which is Isolated Visitor by Jennings and Dingle. So let's look at that right now. Okay, so for the second sandwich routine you've probably never seen before, uh, like I said in the previous routine, this is called Isolated Visitor uh, by Larry Jennings and Derek Dingle. A little bit of history behind this. Um, Larry Jennings published The Visitor, I think it was in um, his book, the, the Magic of Larry Jennings, something like that, I think. Um, but then Derek Dingle and, Larry, uh, and Jennings came, uh, Dingle, um, reworked the routine slightly and republished it and called it uh, Isolated Visitor and published it in Richard's Almanac, uh, by, uh, which is a magazine put out by uh, Richard Kaufman. So you can learn this uh, by, by buying the Collected Almanac, which is available through Kaufman and Greenberg, the Collected Almanac, okay? Um, and, and the reason that it's called Isolated Visitor is not in the original version of this, um, it was just done with one deck. But with this version, the two the pack is divided into two halves, and and the two halves are kept isolated from each other, which makes the routine a lot better. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Let me perform the routine for you, and then we'll talk about the pros and cons. Right. Okay. So let's just assume that we're at the end of the last routine, where we've got the kings out, and we've just got the spectator selection. Although this is going to be signed, and I really don't want to sign an ace from my blue crown deck so we'll switch it out for a two um so we've just finished the first routine by jt wagner we're going to go straight into this routine um so this is what it would look like so sarah look we're going to see if we can go one step further with your card i'm going to get you to sign it because you're all the way over there i'm going to write your name on there sarah there we go yeah absolutely my handwriting is just dreadful it doesn't look like sarah it doesn't look like Sarah. <laughs> the marker pen's really thick it's not like a normal sharpie but no, there. you just bad at writing there is that as well so uh, you're going to make all the decisions right now, Sarah. Okay. Uh, you're going to make all the decisions. So first of all, yeah. Um, just say stop in time one. Stop. Wonderful. So the first decision I want you to make is uh, we've got the red kings and the black kings. Your signed card here, which is still not dry. Do you want me? <laughs> Come back, Sharpie markers. All is forgiven. Um, so this uh, this card that's going to ruin my blue crown deck. Um, do you want it to go in between the black kings or the red kings? Totally your choice. Well, as it's got black sharpie all over, let's put it in the black one. <laughs> Don't blame me. Okay, cool. So we're going to put that card right there in between the black kings. Is that fair? Yeah. Now I'm going to cut this packet of three cards, this sandwich packet, into either that packet or that packet. Which which half of the deck would you like me to put it in? Uh, your right. My right here. So yeah. I want you to see nothing weird going on. Your card sandwiched in between those two kings right there and i'm going to cut these down into this packet is that fair yeah now i'm going to tell you right now i'm going to leave your um your card in between the kings in that packet we're going to use this packet for this i'm going to put that packet all the way over there okay okay and here's what we're going to do 
I'm going to take the two red kings, the two cards that I'm you didn't want. I'm glad because they were feeling a little bit like, you know, useless <laughs> there. Being left out, right? Yeah. So we're going to take these two red kings and I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I do it, which you shouldn't do in magic. I'm going to try and make your signed card disappear from in between the black kings and appear right here in between the red kings. And it looks like this on three. One, two, three. No. And just like that, check it out. It, yeah, I told you, I told you, right there. In between the red kings. It's very sneaky. It, it is very sneaky. But do you want to know how it works? You're not going to tell me. And no, I am. You see, it's all an illusion. It's not real. See, if I snap my fingers, the illusion right, disappears. You see, to get, it's, yeah, because over here, from the very beginning, we've had one card <laughs> in between the black That's kings. That's not my card. It totally is. Check this out. Right there, complete with the bad oh, handwriting. Man. I That's know, my right? badly signed card. That's the one. So hopefully what I was saying before now makes sense. With the original Jennings routine, what you did is you just had the whole pack of cards. You basically did the same thing. So you, you sandwiched the card in between the Black Kings, for say, for example, cut it into the pack, and then you did this with the Red Kings. Because the, card, the packets are separated, it makes it so much better. Uh, it makes the routine so strong. Now, the disadvantage is, in order to do this, you will need a table or you will need really good audience management. But you don't need a close-up pad or anything. But, you know, I mean, there's many, many times when you can be working at a table and you can do this brilliantly. It's, it's a really strong routine. The construction of it is great. Uh, Dingle added a, uh, a Vernon substitute, not substitute, a, a Vernon substitute transfer, fix, a Vernon transfer move in order to achieve it, which just is an amazing addition to the routine. And what's really nice about it is they are convinced that their card is in between the one set of kings. And then when you show it's in between the other set of kings, they freak out. But then you can immediately show it's gone and it's back over there the whole time, which is great. Um, the downside... I'm going to say there's a downside. As I say, the only real downside is you are going to need a table to do this or have exceptional audience management. But outside of that, that's really the only down, uh, downside. It is a very quick routine to do. It's really visual. It's very clear what happens. You know, Vernon actually said, you know, uh, confusion is not magic. You should be able to sum up a routine in one sentence. And if it's convoluted and it takes multiple sentences to explain, then it's not that great a trick. Well, you know, a signed card jumps from one set of kings to the other and back again. That that's, that's the explanation. And it looks so visual. So it's quick. It's simple. It's easy to understand. It's a visual. It uses a signed card. And again, you're left with a regular deck of cards. You've got your sandwich cards out. So you can still go into a routine. You've got all four kings out. So you can go into another sandwich routine. Or you can go into another routine that doesn't involve sandwich cards at all. Or you can go... You, you, the options are limitless. It really is. And combining the first routine, combining the J.C. Wagner routine and the uh, the isolated visitor routine together, it works so well from a routining point of view. Because if you think about the first routine I performed for you, you know, you've got this card, it disappears from in between the, red, the Black Kings and appears in between the Red Kings. So you can transition from that first routine to the second routine by saying, look, maybe you didn't know what was going to happen. Maybe you didn't know that the king was going to jump from one set of kings, to, uh, sorry, that the card was going to jump from one set of kings to the other. Now you know. So I'm going to do it again for you, but I'm going to let you make all of the choices. I'm going to let you do absolutely everything. And I think it's really important when you're constructing magic and you're routining things together, routine effects together, I think it's really important to make sure that the one routine transitions nicely into the other routine and builds. If the second routine is weaker than the first routine, or if there's no transition, it won't look anywhere near as good and it won't make as much sense. And for me, these two routines, they transition perfectly together. Um, so there you go. That's the second sandwich routine you've probably never seen before. Uh, it's Isolated Visitor by Jennings and Dingle. So the final routine that I'm going to uh, share with you is from uh, Spectacle. Now, Spectacle is one of the most... Nobody's ever heard of Spectacle. It's by Stephen Minch. It's an, it was a, a book with a collection of routines by different magicians. Uh, and it's one of the best books I ever bought. If you can get a chance to get a copy of Spectacle, you really should. And there's a routine in there. There's a sandwich routine in there um, that I've been doing for years and years and years. What's nice about it is it's, a, it's the easiest slow motion sandwich routine I've ever seen. And by slow motion sandwich routine, I mean that the kings don't just find the selected card, but they do so slowly, which is perfect 
as a follow on to a normal sandwich routine. So let's say you've just found the card using uh, you know, a traditional sandwich uh, style revelation. You can then go into this and say, well, let me show you the same thing again in slow motion. Let me perform the routine for you and then we'll talk about it. Right, okay, so we'll use the two Black Kings for this and we'll use uh, Sarah's signed card, uh, but it can be basically a shuffle deck in use. So let's just assume uh, that we've done some sort of sandwich revelation. So let's just assume uh, that we've done this, you know, that, that just the bog basic, watch the two Kings, boom, your card's appeared in between it. Just your standard sandwich move, okay? This is where you'd go to from here. Now, let me do that again for you. You're probably wondering how the two Black Kings found your signed card. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do it again, and we're going to do it in slow motion. Sarah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one Black King on the top of the pack, one Black King on the bottom of the pack. So the face-down yeah. cards are here, um, sort of um, in between the two black kings. Now we're going to decide. You're going to decide where your card goes back. It wants to go somewhere in the middle. Just say stop. Stop. Do you, do you want to stop right there? Are you happy with there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do normally you would do this for me, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to flip your card there onto uh, where you said stop. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm going to leave it there. So I want you to watch the two kings are going to try and find your selected card. Watch, if I just twist like this, when I do, the first king disappears off the top, okay. second king disappears off the bottom, and if I spread through, you can see that the first king's gone down a little bit, <laughs> the second king has gone up a little bit, and the reason is, what they're doing is they're going through all of these cards, trying to find yours. Right. They've decided that none of your, these cards are We've your cards. We've eliminated card. those ones. We're eliminating them slowly, right. yeah. Let's do that again. So we've got the two kings, again, on the top and the bottom of the packet. This time you know what's going to happen. Watch if I come here and twist. You can see that the king disappears off the top and off the bottom. Yeah. And if I spread through, you can see that there they are, right there. And they've now decided on one card and one card <laughs> only. And that one card they've decided on is Easy your signed <laughs> card. It's a slow motion revelation. So sorry to bang on about the transitioning thing, but again, this is a great routine to transition into, as I said, from a normal sandwich routine. Because now you've seen it, you can kind of appreciate the first, you know, if you, if you follow this from a normal revelation, then you've done the sandwich thing, and then you do this, and it happens in slow motion. It's really nice. Um, the routine's not actually that difficult either. All you need to make sure of is um, that you do do some sort of pass. Now, when I was doing this routine, the pass I was using over here uh, was the Midnight Shift by Steve Drawn. Uh, I think, personally, when you're doing um, a vanish or a change or something like that and you're needing to use a pass to achieve that, I think the Midnight Shift is, is, is probably the best shift that you can do. Um, but, I mean, it depends on what you're comfortable with. You know, there's so many different ways to um, do a pass. You know, you can use uh, a classic pass, you can do uh, a turnover pass. There's so many different versions. But for me, um, I, I either do um, the midnight shift or sometimes I'll do the uh, the free turn pass, you know, Bruce Avon's free turn pass. But other than that, it's not really that difficult. So if you do a pass, you're golden. Um, I've tried to play around of doing this without a pass and just cutting the pack but it really loses something, it doesn't work. So, I mean, if you if you don't do a pass, this is, some, this is a routine that you can kind of aim towards. Because to be honest, I think that when you're learning a pass, you need a routine in order to actually learn it. You, it's not good enough to just do as a control because there's so many different ways to do a con, to, to control the card. You don't need a pass. But if you, if you have a routine in mind that you like, that you wanna do, then that will, you know, gear you on to be able to do it. Anyway, with that said, this routine is super commercial. Again, like all the routines I've shown you on this video, it's a shuffle deck in use anytime, anywhere. It can be a signed card. Uh, it doesn't require a table because you can literally just dump the, the cards that are being eliminated every time. You can hand them over to a spectator. Um, you're left in a situation where you've got a signed card and a sandwich. Uh, card so you can actually then use those to go into another sandwich routine or if you want to you can just go on with any any trick that involves a, a regular deck in use it's really visual the vanishes are really visual and and if you do the first revelation if you just do like a normal sandwich thing and there's no visual aspect to it the visual aspect of the kings vanishing from the top of the pack they make it even stronger it, they really do um there's not really a downside to this. The, the angles are great. Uh, it's super commercial. 
outside of the pass. It's easy to do. Uh, it's quick. It's visual. I mean, there's, there's literally no downside. And, and honestly, I would advise you to get Spectacle by Stephen Minch. There's so many really great routines in there. Go get Spectacle by Stephen Minch. Um, and then learn this routine because this routine is an absolute stonker. Um, so there you have it. That's three routines using sandwich cards that you've probably never seen before. Uh, you know, these routines are quite old. You know, Unexpected Visitor is from the 80s. Sorry, Unexpected Visitor, that's uh, <laughs> Doug Brewer. Uh, Isolated Visitor is from the, uh, the the late 80s, I believe. Uh, the J.C. Wagner thing is from the 70s. That one is probably from the 90s. You know, they're, they're very old routines, which is why probably a lot of people haven't done them. Let me know in the comments, have you done any of these routines before? How do you find they play for you? Uh, if you have done any of them, uh, d like, for example, the, uh, the isolated visitor, did you do the original version? Did you do the isolated version? Which version do you, do you think is better? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, would you like to see another one of these videos with sandwich routines? Because like I said at the beginning of the video, I know hundreds of sandwich effects. I literally know hundreds. I've published dozens of them myself. These are the three that I wanted to share with you initially. But if there's enough interest, I'll probably do a follow-on video with another three sandwich routines you've probably never seen before. So let me know what you think. Would you be interested in watching a video like that? Uh, is there anything else on this series you'd like me to do? Um, if there is, let me know below. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I, uh, we're here every single day. So tomorrow we've got a rant. Saturday we've got an honest trailer. Sunday we've got a QA, and a Monday marketing for magicians. And then Wednesday we have the review show with me and Rye. And don't forget, six o'clock every day we go live with another Magic Live. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow. My name's Craig from Slightly Unusual Magic TV.